Hey everyone, I'm really excited because Adobe just put out Lightroom 5.0 and I love Lightroom. It's what I use for almost everything. I use the online version of Lightroom more than anything else because I have an iPad and I have a Windows machine, I have a Mac machine and I'm using a bunch of different things. So I'm always ready to get my edits on the go or on my computer, wherever I'm at. I think that does a great job and 5.0 brings a whole bunch of cool stuff to the table. So let's go in and check it out. The first thing that they bring us is some pretty advanced masking features. And they're using some machine learning. They call it machine learning to go in and help you mask some things. So uh, let's check out a couple examples and see how well it does. This is a photo of, I took of my son here the last weekend and the masking tools are now in a new little area. I'm gonna click on masking and the select, select sky um, and select subject are the deep learning ability of 5.0 to go in there and select parts of the photo. So I'm just gonna click select subject. And on this picture, it does a really good job. You can see that it masked really well. And there is a smooth gradation from my son to the background. So now if I wanted to go in and maybe just increase the exposure, I could do that. I could lower it. That is pretty awesome. Right here on the plus and the minus, we have the ability to add and subtract to our selection, our mask and we can click overlay to show it or not, and we can also change the color of the overlay right there. Some really cool advanced tools there. So it did a really good job of selecting my son. I could go in and you know boost his shadows a little bit, make him a little brighter. Also, if I wanted to go into the background and maybe make the background desaturated, since he's masked already, he's selected, I can go and click invert, and then that makes the selection now the, the, the match to the background, and I can go in there and I could, uh, let's just desaturate the background and you'll see how amazing of a job it does at just isolating the background. And I can refine my mask by clicking on, of course, the plus and the minus. What's cool is they've given us some additional ways to do this. So if I click add, I could add with a brush, I could add with a linear gradient, I could add to a radial gradient. So let's just try the linear gradient. I'm gonna add like that, something crazy. And look at that. So now I can move my gradient around. That is pretty sweet. Holy cow. The ability to then to add more of those. Every time you do one of these, it adds a layer right there. So I can subtract one now. And this time I'm gonna use a brush and it adds a new layer right there. So we're stacking the ability to have multiple masks on the same photograph. What's really powerful to me about Lightroom, the online version, is the ability to then sync that up at wherever I'm at. And these edits are gonna be there. I am really super excited about that because I use different computers and this is gonna be a big, big help to me. So let's try uh, another photo just to see how well this thing does. We're gonna go back to the um, masking features. I'm gonna create a new mask and select subject. And again, it does an amazing job. I selected him. There's some gradation between his hair and the background. Let's go ahead and do a, look at that. Holy cow, that is awesome. I think it did a great job. This is super fun. Let's go ahead and try out a couple of the other tools that they've given us. So they've given us the, um, uh, in masking, they've given us the ability to select skies. So let's go to a picture I took uh, two weekends ago and I'm gonna select sky, it's detecting it. And yeah, it did a pretty good job there. I can, uh, I can see that it, it didn't do perfect, right? So it selected part of my building, but then if I go to subtract and I can go to a brush, let's say, and now I could start to get in there and do more refined edits and I could remove that part of the, uh, of the mask in a better way. You know, this is when you wanna get real intense and <laughs> do some really good work, take some time doing it. Uh, that looks great, right? I can take it away pretty easily. Let's look at another photo. Let's see about this one. Some hay bales, I'm in Nebraska, so I'm getting a lot of hay bales and corn and stuff. So I'm gonna go to the masking tool, select the sky again. And it did a really good job again. I would have to go in, let's see. Wow, it did a great job. Even on, the, on those fine edges, it did really well. It's gonna save some time in editing. That's pretty awesome. Let's do another one. Let's do that one. I'm gonna select the sky. 
and it did a good job again. If I, if I increase the sky, if I darken it, let me invert this one, and then we're gonna, of course, brighten the, the uh, that old barn up. Oh my gosh, did a fantastic job. Super cool, this is, this is exciting. I'm, I'm pumped, let's do this one. Let's see if it gets the sky on this one. This one I thought was a little bit tougher because of the trees. And not too bad. You know, there's an area in the middle it didn't do super well on. But for honestly, for a one-click artificial intelligence, machine learning, adjustment, masking, it did an amazing job. This is pretty cool. So I think overall, right now, the ability to do the uh, machine learning to select sky and the select subject is pretty awesome. I think it works really well. Let's look at a couple other advanced masking features that we have. So I'll click on this photo and I have a bunch of yellow in here and greens. We have the ability to go in and select a color range with our mask. So I'm gonna click that. You can click on or draw a box around the areas that you wanna select. So I'm just gonna select on the yellow there. And then it selected pretty much all that yellow and even the, the colors close to the yellow. So if I go in and I change the hue of that, I can turn most of those into, uh, into pink flowers. That is pretty awesome. It didn't touch the green very much, did it? That is a really good job, Adobe. Let's try this one. Uh, I'm gonna do the color range again. I'm gonna draw a box around the purples and I'm showing the overlay and we're gonna sh shift that. So I'm at uh, those purple flowers, I'm gonna shift to, uh, to be yellow now. Did a really good job. Didn't get all the purple. We could add more, of course, the range. Uh, but for what it did right now, I'm gonna add more in there. And you can see then that it's selected almost all of it. This is a lot of fun. I know, you know, we've been able to do that in other programs and this has been around for a while, but I love the ability to do it in Lightroom now and to have those edits synced everywhere. Uh, there's one more that is the, uh, let's go to another photo. Took this one in a band school house. The luminance range. Uh, there's two more. There's, the one's a luminance range and I can select because it's like a really contrasty photo. I can select those areas and it's basically now taken and selected. Remember the luminous range is just the areas of brightness or darkness. Since I selected the brightest part of the picture, it selects, it masks the, that area only. And so I'm, when I'm making my edits, look at how I can bring the background back into the, into the photo. And of course I can invert it and then I could brighten up the inside a little bit, bring up the interior, bring up the contrast of the interior. Oh man, that's cool. Within just a few minutes, I've gone from that to that, which brings back some of the detail just within, you know, a couple quick edits. Um, and I think that there's one more here that Adobe has included, and this is the uh, luminance range, or no, I'm sorry, the uh, depth range. And that's if you shoot a photo that has depth in it, like a portrait photo on your iPhone, uh, which I do not have on this computer at all, but I'm sure it works pretty well to adjust the depth range. It seems like uh, uh, all the other uh, updates that Adobe has given us has been pretty well, pretty pretty good. One last update that I wanted to show you was the crop tool. They've added some overlays. So when we're going onto uh, the crop tool, you have the ability then to select the rule of thirds, to select diagonals, just look at the center mark, the golden ratio, the spiral, the golden spiral, and then um, you can see the different aspect ratios. Uh, so for instance, four by five for like Instagram and stuff like that. Pretty awesome. You can see right off the bat what a photo would look like if it was cropped a little bit differently. We could crop it right down to a five by seven pretty quickly. Uh, Adobe, good job on some of these updates. So hope you enjoyed. Ask questions below. What do you think of the update? I'd love to know what you thought of the Lightroom updates. I know some people are gonna say it's, you know, too little, too late. Like they're, they're already, uh, this should have been something that was done a long time ago, but I'm just happy to get these now. So have a great day. Make sure to subscribe. I love doing this stuff. Have a good one.